But I'm so excited to talk to you guys tonight. Uh, Mary asked me to talk to you about challenge groups and just running challenge groups and, you know, how to get started with it. Like, you know, when you're a brand new coach, uh, challenge groups could probably seem intimidating. I know a lot of my new coaches, challenge groups are something that kind of intimidates people. So I thought I would just kind of show you what I do and what I did when I first started and what I'm doing now. And I have a couple other funny things to show you too. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share. Oh, sorry. My name's Laura Bazell. Um, in case you guys don't know uh, me yet. Let me see here. I'm hoping that I'm hoping you guys, can you guys see like my desktop? If somebody, I can't see you guys because I'm maximized. Yes, I see your desktop. Oh, good. So you see my challenge groups picture and stuff? Yes. Awesome. 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 Okay. Okay. So like I said, my name is Laura Bazell, and I'm just going to give you guys some, I'm going to try to keep it to 30 minutes, uh, but I'm going to give you guys some tips, some tricks, and some encouragement with challenge groups. So just a little bit about me before I get into it. I have been a coach, this April I'll, I'll have been a coach for four years, and I actually started running challenge groups right away. I, um, I Jessica Lauder is my upline coach, and she talked me into becoming a coach and I got into a challenge group right away. My husband and I joined her challenge group and I, I got a couple of people to join me in that challenge group. But for the whole group, I just was so excited by the end of that group to start my own group. I, she gave me templates that Lindsay Matway had passed down to Brittany Leggett, who had passed down to her. And there was like three different ones. And I just literally... Um, what I did was I just decided I was going to do my own group and I literally copy and pasted my, the entire very first group. I did it day by day, each day in the morning, I would wake up, I would go to the template, I would copy the post, get a picture for it, post it in my group. And that's exactly how I started. Um, there's always that anxiety when you become a new coach, like I'm going to plan this group. I'm going to advertise for this group. I'm going to get this group together. And then what happens if I only get one person or what happens if I only get two people? And I know you have that. A lot of new coaches have that worry and that's completely legitimate. But the only way to get through that is to just go for it and just know that my first group that I ran, it had five people in it, my husband, myself, and three other people. And that was it. So you don't have to have a huge group to run your first group. And, you know, it, it's so much better to just take the reins and, and do your own group. And I'll give you a bunch of reasons why in a minute. But I'm a Success Club 10 All-Star Legend. And it's a 30, I've, I've been uh, a legend for 36 months. So that's three years of Success Club 10. And that I have achieved through just doing the four vital behaviors, inviting, inviting, inviting every single day, tracking my business and being consistent. And consistency is key when it comes to Success Club. But so as you sign up more challengers, as you sign up more coaches, you're gonna have more people and your challenge groups are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. But, but when you're a new coach, you should just rest in the fact and be comfortable in the fact that in your, your first challenge group that you do, you're, if, if it's small, then you can really give those challengers that one-on-one, -on -one, that, that, that attention that they need to, to, to be successful. If you, it's, there's nothing wrong with jumping into your uplines group, but if, if you put them into a huge, huge group, just remember that there's that always that factor of um, them maybe not getting not getting that one on that feel of getting that one on one attention from you as their leader. So I encourage you guys to just go for it. Um, and when when I first started, I decided I was going to do a challenge group every single month, and I I literally. Even through, two, even through having my son Easton and, and other things going on in life, I have never missed a month of running a challenge group. So um, at first it was like, oh, do I have to run these every month? But now 
I lean on these groups. These, the groups that I run are my lifeline. They are the thing that keeps me accountable. Posting every day and, and showing up every day in that group helps me to stay on track with my fitness and my, um, my personal development and everything that, that I need to, uh, to run a successful challenge group. It keeps me on track with all that stuff. And just know, not all of my groups have rocked, okay? There are groups that are going to be dead. There are groups, there are clean eating groups. Sometimes you will do a post and there, it will be complete crickets. And uh, there'll, there'll be other times when you get 100 people in your clean eating group and it's the deadest group ever in the world and you're like, what? is going on or a challenge group some months just the participation is just really low and that that should not hold you back because that does not reflect your ability to coach a lot of times it reflects maybe the time of the year or just just the winds the the winds may have changed and people just may be off track so just know that not all of your groups are going to completely rock so what exactly is a challenge group? I want to break this down. A challenge group is a safe place created to lead a group of people to work together, helping and supporting one another to reach their goals. So keep, keep that in mind. This is a group of people. You don't want to be the only one motivating. You want your challengers to be motivating each other. You want them to be helping and supporting one another. Um, an apprentice coach, I don't know what Mary calls them, but apprentice coach or, or co-leading a challenge group is what a new coach should be doing. As a new coach, you should go into your uplines challenge group and for as many months as you need. I mean, seriously, I know Mary, I don't know what Mary's policy is for that, but I have hobby coaches who have been doing my groups for months and months and months and months. I have coaches who jump off and start doing their own groups right away. But an apprentice coach to me is a new coach who is shadowing their sponsor, co-leading co the challenge group. This coach should be not just doing the group like like a challenger. They should be taking notes. They should be looking and seeing what their coach is doing. They should be watching their coach, the way that they're running the group and taking notes and learning the ropes so that they can start running their own group the next month. I would say by your third month as a coach, especially if you're a business builder who's getting success club, you should be running your own challenge group within the first few months. So your goal for 2017, I want you guys to build your tribe. And the way you build your tribe is by running your own groups and being the leader of your team. So your first group might be small. It's okay. If you start small, like I said, you can give 100% and grow your group every month by adding the three to five challengers or apprentice coaches. Because as you start running your own groups, then you're going to start signing up your own apprentice coaches. It's hard to sign up coaches to be apprentice coaches if you're still an apprentice coach in your, in your coaches group. So when you become the leader of your groups, the people that you're signing up as challengers will maybe decide to then be your apprentice coach in your group. So these are just some of the groups I've done. I just kind of grabbed these really quick off, off of my computer the other day, but you can do your groups however you want, and that's the cool part. I know that Dynasty United has a, a plethora of templates. I'm sure Mary has a ton of different challenge group templates for you guys to use. But what I did when I first signed up, when I first um, signed up and I first started doing my groups, as I started to get more comfortable with it, rather than just copying and pasting, what I would do is kind of write my own post each day. All these challenge group templates you see, they look like this big like thing someone created. The way I created mine was just one day at a time. Day one, I would write the post. Day two, I would write the post. Day three, I would write the post. It's very, very natural to do it that way. But when you're doing it, make sure that you're saving your posts onto a Google document so that later you can reuse that template or you can pass that template down to your teams. But you can you can choose any theme of group you want. There's a lot of different coaches who lead their groups a lot of different ways. I try to keep it simple. I do try to change my posts up every month because I don't want things to get boring for my challenge group enthusiasts, my discount coaches, my hobby coaches that drink Shakeology months and months and months and do my groups every other month. So I I try to change the theme. But I try to make it something that's relatable because if your theme is relatable to your market, then when you post your post and you write about whatever the theme is, people are going to relate to that. These are some of the best ones that I've done. Um, this busy and balanced 
I've done a lot of different busy themes. Busy is the new happy, busy and balanced, because as you know, all of us ladies, we're all busy, whether we are stay-at-home moms, whether we're work at working moms, whether we are single, dog moms, whatever, everybody's busy. So I love relating on that fact. Um, I'm doing this for me is, is something that so many of my challengers have told me, because I always ask the challengers at the beginning, what is your reason why you're doing this? And a lot of times after a few months of doing the challenge groups, they're, they're doing it for them. They may have started out doing it for their family, for their whatever, but now they're doing it for them. So that was one of the other themes I did. Take a break from the scale is, was such an awesome one. Uh, I, I definitely want to do that again this year. This one was awesome because I challenged my challengers to not weigh themselves for the entire challenge and only wait till the end. And then to be completely honest, if you are advertising on Facebook, like uh, um, on a, if you're, if you're, even if you're like, especially paying to advertise on your like page, keeping the text, like to me, the one at the bottom left is too much text. This take a break from the scale is an awesome design if you're doing an ad because it's very bold text. It's very simple. Um, it's eye catching. Um, if you put too much text on your challenge group graphics, it can, it can just reduce the affinity of your post. It makes it harder to read. But this one was just, the one on the bottom is just really general. I wasn't really targeting anybody but women on that one. So why should you run your own challenge groups? There are so many reasons. For the first one and foremost, you gain credibility. Like I was saying, you are the top coach then. You are the leader. You're the one whose face is on that post. You're the one whose face is on the banner. You're the one who is doing the live videos and, and motivating the team. Um, the second one, you're held to a higher position of accountability because nobody else is going to post or check in if you forget. So you've got to be on point. You've got to remember to eat your breakfast, your snacks, your lunch. You, you have to remember to, to check in with your group. You've got to remember to post the post every day. And although that might sound like a burden, in reality, it keeps you on track with your fitness. It keeps you on track with your daily routine. Um, so that one's a no, that one's really, that one's a really, really awesome one for me. That that's one of the biggest, for me, the biggest blessings as a coach is to be held on track and held accountable that way. Number three, you can add your own personality and style, which will attract others like you that need your help. Um, I love what one of my coaches said to me the other day. Um, we, she was doing a call about um, free groups and how to run free groups for our team. And she said when she first did her first free group, she just took my templates and she copied and pasted them and she, and, and the group bombed. And it wasn't until she put her own personality, her own style, her own, um, just her into the group and changed it up and made it her own. And now her free groups rock every single month. So put your own personality and style into that. And you can do that when you run your own groups. Number four, your team, even if it's just one coach, they're going to duplicate what you're doing and will branch off and start doing their own groups too. Like I said, you can't have an apprentice coach if you're not running your own group. So if you want, if you want to sign up coaches who want to run their own groups, then you need to be a coach that's running um, a group too. Uh, number five, it's way, way easier than it seems. People a lot of times think of the big picture when they think of a challenge group. They think of from day one to 28 and, and all the things in between. Just think of it as one, one, one post a day, one check-in a day. That's it. It's way easier, especially even writing templates is way easier than it seems. And number six, it, it's what you need to be doing ASAP, ASAP if you want to build a thriving business. It, you got to be doing challenge groups as a coach. So I want you to repeat after me. I am a top coach, you don't have to really unmute yourself, but I am a top coach who is fully capable of leading a thriving team. And I want you to say that now, but I want you to write that down. And I want you to pin that up somewhere in your house where you're going to see that every single day. And I want you to say that to yourself out loud every single day um, and, and visualize that because fake it till you make it for real. That is what I did. I, I swear I felt like I was, I sometimes I still feel like I'm faking it, but for the first couple of years, I really was. My first coach training group that I led, I had no clue what I was doing, but I love this, po um, this quote, you must be the person you have never had the courage to be. Gradually, you will discover that you are that person. 
but until you can see this clearly, you must pretend and invent. So fake it till you make it. And I hope I don't mess up this thing. I want to, um, I want to play for you guys something really quick. Hopefully this will work. Um, if anybody can't see this YouTube, if you can't see it, um, tell me if you can't. It, um, but anyways, this was, this video was made on May 28th, 2013. I signed up as a coach in April of 2013. So this is the intro video that I created for my very first challenge group I've ever done. Um, and I really rec I'm going to explain, like, I'm going to break down how to open your group and what you should do, but I really always recommend making an intro video for your group to introduce yourself, to tell the challengers what to do, and have that be the first thing you post when you open your group. So this, I looked at Lindsay Matway's video, and this was my first video. I'm not going to play the whole thing, um, but I'm going to play a couple seconds of it really quick. Welcome to the official preseason of the June Challenge. We have less than one week until our challenge begins. It starts this coming Monday. Some of you have started your workouts already, but that's okay. Um, the official group starts this Monday. Um, I just want to welcome all of you to the group and let you know how excited I am to be your coach for the next 60 days. I've talked with you each individually about your goals, and I am positive that all of you are going to be successful. There's just a handful of things that I need you to do every day. One. Okay, you guys get the point, right? That's my first one. That was me, when my, my very first group, right? And this was the last group that I just did. Not March, but um, February. Hey, ladies. It's Laura Bissell, and I am so excited to welcome you to our group this month. This month's challenge is called the Love Yourself Challenge, and that's because, first of all, it's the month of February. It's the time to be in love. It's the time to have Valentine's. It's also the time for temptations of candy and treats and sweets and things like that. So rather than focusing on all of that stuff, we loving others and oops, helping oops, others oops. is okay. Okay. All right. So you guys get the point. Um, my point is, you can see... We're, and I, I have an education background, so it's not like I haven't done public speaking before, but you can just see where I was when I first started and where I am now versus like as far as like I have like the white backdrop, I've got the lighting, I've got my makeup is done differently, I, I can, I'm speaking more, um, my voice is just different, the way I'm on camera is different, the camera angle is different, everything's different because I have grown so much as a coach, but if I would have looked at that first video that I ever made after I made it and, and, and then looked at Lindsay Matways and, I, and, and quit because mine wasn't like hers, I never would have gotten to where I am today. If I would have compared myself to her and her beautifully done, professionally made, edited up video, if that would have stopped me from running my group every single month and doing a new intro video every single month, I may never have, if I would have quit, I never would have become where I am now to where my video looks kind of like Lindsay Matway's videos do. So you can't quit. You've got to just tell yourself that you are a top coach every single day because that you're going to speak that into your life. So really, really quickly, um, I don't want to go too much over our time, um, but how to plan. Basically, it's all about just post invite, post invite, post invite, post invite. You post on Facebook, you invite privately, private messages, post more on Facebook, private messages. Um, but what you want to do is, first of all, you have to choose a date to start. Don't, don't base this on how many people you think you're going to get or worrying about how many people you might get. Just choose a date to start and boldly say that you are looking for however many people, five people, 10 people, 20 people, whatever you want to do. Um, but choose the date to start your preseason. And it's best to start planning this two to three weeks before the date. So right now, you should be thinking about the April group that you're going to lead. For example, I'm mine starts April 3rd. So I have um, three days at the beginning of April to really push for all my people and get Success Club right before my challenge group so that I have success club 10 locked in right away. That's, that's the way I do it. Um, but you got to choose the date. Then the second one, choose the length of your group. 
However, that's up to you. When you do your own groups, you can do it however you want. The theme of your group, the title of your group, and the expectations for your group. You may just you may want to decide like are you is it a is it a, a 28 day group are you going to require Shakeology is it is it co-ed is it just females is it um, what what's the theme going to be around decide all of that then make a graphic on PicMonkey for your group and then while it's open change it around again and re recreate it another way and make a couple of them, maybe three, so that you have more than one graphic to use. Um, but remember, you're, you might make formal graphic um, a formal graphic, like the ones I showed you, but you also want to promote your group in a lot of other ways that aren't formal. Um, by, by shouting out your challengers, that's a way of, of, of posting about your group. By just talking about the results the ladies are getting or talking about what sometimes if, if uh, sometimes I post about whatever that challenge was for our group that day I'll post about that on Facebook or whatever however you can tie that in but you can jab your challenge group um, and as you're inviting privately to it all month uh, but make sure you decide how many people you're looking for and a, a, a sign-up deadline you really want that sign-up deadline and I know you're like well I want I don't want people to think they can't order the day after because they can right but when you have a deadline you can create urgency for your group and you can tell people that this is the cutoff and I really do have a deadline if I have preseason week and it starts on Monday and it's a whole week long after Wednesday I'm done I'm done inviting to that group. I'm done putting people in that group. I'm setting my sights forward to the next group or the next um, coach group or something. So um, set that deadline. You really wanna be able to create that urgency with people. The fourth one is to make a woofoo.com account. If you don't have a woofoo.com account, go out and make one. Um, make a simple sign up form to use in your post. I'm sure that you've seen the top coaches in their post. It says click here to fill out the application or to fill out the interest form. You can look on my page. I, I think I have one on a recent post. Feel free to click on it and just use, you can use those, um, the questions that I have on mine. I think I got, I got mine from Brittany or, or somebody's form or just look at other people's forms and, and think of what you wanna ask people. What is it that you wanna know about people that are gonna sign up for your group? Because um, it makes you look so professional. That one little, it'll probably take you less than an hour to set up that WooFoo account and that WooFoo form. Um, but it makes you look so much, so professional. Um, then number five, write a post to advertise. Uh, be sure to make this relatable. So either show your results that you've gotten. Before and after pictures are like the best thing to use as a challenge group post because they get so much attention because you're showing your results. So either show your results or write about your results. So I want you to think of like before and after pictures, but also before and after you. Like how were you before you, you signed up with as a coach? What are you like now? How were you at the beginning of the group and how are you feeling now? Um, and also posting your workouts every day and posting your workout accountability pictures every single day, that's another way of posting about your challenge group. But make sure that you're posting at least three to five times a week about your group in a variety of ways. And no, you are not going to bother people. You're not gonna overload people's news feeds with your challenge posts. That's not the way Facebook works. And if people are seeing your posts, it's a lot. It's because they're liking and commenting on your posts. So if they're liking and commenting on your posts, they're not going to mind seeing more of your posts, okay? So don't worry about that stuff. Number six, privately invite at least three to five people every single day to your challenge group. It doesn't matter whether you're running a clean eating group this week. It doesn't matter if you're running a coaching sneak peek next week. It doesn't matter if your challenge group just ended yesterday. It doesn't matter if it's the first of the month or the last day of the month. You have got to invite those people to your challenge group every single day. I have Success Club 12 and I invited today, I invited seven people to my challenge group. And yesterday I invited 14 people to my challenge group for March. So don't think that there's any time when you should not be inviting three to five people every single day. And then follow up with these people every 24 to 48 hours with the people who said, yes, tell me more. Keep following up with them. Keep going on their page, loving on their posts, liking their posts, um, interacting with them and writing posts that relate to them and follow, keep following up. 
And lastly, you got to be proud of your group. Don't, don't think that you need to hide that. Don't think that you need to be, um, that, you know, some people might have opinions about beach body coaches, but honestly, I, those people's opinions don't, matter to me. I love our company. I love what we do. I love what we stand for. I love our team. I just think that it's so, it's so amazing what we do for people as coaches. So be proud of your group. Talk up your group. Um, cut out any and all negativity. And if anybody gives you problems about what you're doing, they really don't understand it. And so I would just completely block them out of your, just your mind frame. So really quickly, really quickly, how to execute your group. So first of all, um, you, you should have a sign-up sheet going in your, your group that you're running the week prior to the end of your group. Get a sign-up sheet going for your next group because when you use the My Challenge Tracker app, it's going to ask you to put people's email addresses in. So if you create a Google spreadsheet with name, email address, um, have that going around in your group and get a culture going on in your challenge groups and on your team that people have got to get their name and email address on that list. So what, that's what you want to do. And then you create a Facebook group and you create a group on the app. Now, I don't know how, how you guys normally do this, but this is what I do. I have the, I use the My Challenge Tracker app every single month and it mirrors my Facebook group. I use the tracker app for um, people to put in their measurements, put their pictures, uh, check in with their shakes, and check in with their workouts. And then they don't post anything else in there. And I don't go through that group and like and comment on things. And then the Facebook group has the daily challenge post. It has all the files in the file section. It has, um, that's where everybody posts all their uh, regular posts in that group. So that's how we do it. And it's been working really well. Um, and then what I do is I post, um, I open up the Facebook group and I post the, the description. And the description has a link for them to sign up on the sign up sheet. And I give everybody until Wednesday of preseason to have their name on the list. And that's been working really well. And then in the app, I put a post that's the same every month and it just tells them, what they're supposed to do in the app and to refer to the Facebook group for the community section of it. It's been working really well. Um, always remember, add all your files, do all your banner updates, everything. Get the group perfect before you add any of your challengers to the group. Get everything ready. Then create your intro video. Um, watch Mary's, watch mine, watch some of the other coaches' uh, intro videos, and then just, just go ahead and make it. If you have an iPhone, you can get iMovie on your phone, and it is, it's so easy to edit your videos. Um, but keep it simple, or just be brave, add all your people to the group, and go live in the group, and do your intro video that way, okay? Decide ahead of time what contests you wanna do what special themes you might want to do, or how you want your challengers to introduce themselves. I ask my challengers to go to the top and do a live video, and I usually offer a prize for everybody that does an intro video. I offer, a, um, I, I draw, draw a name out of the hat, and I give a prize out. Um, and a lot of times I'll do a prize at the end of the group. Um, for February, this is a really cool idea. For February, I did a scavenger hunt. I don't have it sitting here. I did, a, it, it was the Love Yourself scavenger hunt. Oh, here it is. It was just a list of, of 21 things for them to do to love themselves. And they had to check off throughout the month. And whoever did all of them by the end of the challenge was entered to win a $50 spa gift card. And at least uh, four of the ladies did the entire thing. I, I think I missed like one on mine, but there's so many different fun things you can do. So try to think of those things ahead of time. That way you're more intentional about the, um, the, the, the stuff and it won't slip your mind and you won't forget. Um, number three, then you add all your people to both groups. Then post your intro video. Um, and, and have it be like a check-in post where they have to comment below to say, yes, I'm here. Yes, I saw the video. I usually tag everybody that does not check in. I tag them in that post to make sure that they are in. And I say, hey, hey, just want to make sure that you're in the group, that you saw this video. Please check in below. And I make sure that every single person co um, comments like, I'm here, or I'm ready. Um, and then, then after I do that, 
I used to try to track down my lost challengers that day. I don't do that anymore. I leave it up to the people to get on that sign up sheet. If they don't get on the sign up sheet, they're not going to hear from me until Wednesday or Thursday of preseason. So after I do all of that, then I get back to work. I get back on my computer and I follow up with as many people as I can think of to give them a last call message. Hey, I just added everybody to my, the challenge group for this month and I am closing the group soon. You can still get in today if you decide to join us. Are you interested still? And I send out as many of, like I literally set the timer for like a few hours and I just follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up like crazy until probably Tuesday and then Wednesday I downshift and start trying to find lost challengers and people who went off HD or went MIA. I try to find them, get them back on Shakeology, get them into the group. It's a lot of work. That first week it is, but that's where you're going to get all your sales. That's where you're going to get your success club 10 for the month. Um, and then also you want to decide what time you're going to post every day and stick to it. Maybe you really aren't very good at getting up on time and posting it in the morning or you forget or you're busy. Do it at night before you go to bed. Or I strictly rely on my scheduler. It saves my life because I can do more than one group at a time. So you can get a scheduler that will post for you and they're not very expensive. So get a scheduler. And then number five, decide what templates you're going to use because there's so many and there's no reason for new coaches to reinvent the wheel right away. So use your uplines templates. Once you, there's a bunch of them um, in Dynasty United files section too. Once you feel ready to create content, then create your content one day at a time. Um, next, set a reminder in your phone. Set a reminder in your phone to check in with your challenge group every single day because you never want a day to go by where you as the leader do not like and comment on every single post in the group and require your um, apprentice coaches to do the same. You want to explain to them that they should be doing what you're doing. So you've got to be doing it so that they'll do it too. So make sure that you do that every day. And then number seven, do it again next month. Okay. Don't kill your momentum by being a fair weather coach. Remember that your audience is watching you and whether they signed up for your challenge group this month or not, whether they said yes or no to your invite, they're still watching you. And when they see you do that group month after month, after month, after month, without failing, without stopping, they, one month you're doing this theme. Then you're doing another challenge group. Oh, there she's doing another challenge group again. They're seeing you post your workout accountability pictures. They're seeing you be positive. They're seeing you get healthier and get happier. Guess what they're going to do when they finally get to the point where they cannot take it anymore? They're going to be calling you up. They're going to be joining your group. They will be doing it. So you have to stay consistent and, and, and do it again every single month. And number eight, walk the walk. The more you're sticking to your plan, the better your groups are going to be, the better everyone else's results are going to be too. So if you're following a program by the book, if you're going to do core to force and you're going to do it from start to finish without missing a workout and you're going to X off that calendar every single day and you show your group that you're doing that, guess what they're going to be doing? If you're sending in your results to the Beachbody Challenge, get a t-shirt for every um, program you do, they're going to be doing it too. So stick to your plan and, and walk the walk and they're going to walk the walk too. So, um, Mary wanted me to talk a little bit really quick about transitioning challengers into coaches. It's really not rocket science. Okay. Um, the way I do it is just by regularly posting about coaching and what it's doing for me. Remember your challengers are seeing your Facebook posts too. I do coaching webinars all the time. I always invite my brand new challengers to these webinars at least once. Um, usually during like the week two of the challenge group, I'll invite them to a coaching webinar and see if they're interested in it. Sneak peeks are huge. Um, I invite all the challengers to that too. Private messages, messaging them to talk to them, to find out, to help them to get results with their workouts, giving them compliments about helping in the, in the challenge group and how motivating their, um, their workout posts are to you. That creates trust. Helping them get results is how you create coaches. Uh, asking for referrals. If you ask one of your challengers for referral and they give you two people that 
want to join, you're like, hello, you need to become a coach and sign them up under you. So that's another way to bring up coaching to challenge to the challengers. And also just remember this, you need to tell everyone about coaching. Every challenger that you sign up has the right to hear about the coaching opportunity. It is not our choice to decide whether or not they get to learn about it because you, you cannot judge, prejudge someone and decide whether they would be a great coach or not. I know you've all seen one, of, one person and thought, oh my word, they would make such an awesome coach. Everyone has the potential to be an awesome coach. So don't ever underestimate someone and don't ever hold back this opportunity to anybody. So here's your call to action. Um, I want you to plan and exec execute your launch. Okay. So whether you're going to go on your own and do a group, whether you are a brand, brand, brand new coach and you're going to do a coach with um, a group with your upline coach or whether you're going to pair up with a success partner and do a group or maybe a group of coaches um, on the team and you are going to do a group set your date in April okay I want you guys to report back to Mary she's gonna be like what is everybody messaging me for I want you to report to her and give her your the date for your next challenge group okay and if you are going to be Jumping into her group and leading with her, I really highly recommend running your own free clean eating group or free abs challenge or some sort of a free group because they're so low maintenance, they're so um, easy to run. Just go for it. I mean, if it bombs, it bombs. I mean, my my coach um, sneak peek right now is really dead. Um, it just happens, but don't worry about it. Just do it. Um, and then start advertising now. I'm getting ready to make my graphic for my March group tomorrow. Start advertising, or sorry, my April group. Start advertising now. Start jabbing. Start um, giving those little um, posts about the challenge group you're in now and talking about challenge groups and then, and then just go for it. So that's my call to action for you. Let me exit. Stop share. Okay. Hey. So, um, sorry, I went a little over thirty minutes, but. Oh my gosh! Okay, Laura, you just killed that call. That was awesome. You absolutely rocked it. Doesn't she make like the most beautiful slides ever? She really does. Um, ah, that was so good. That was so. Good. You had so many powerful nuggets. Um, you and I run things extremely similar, extremely similar. And I just love that you brought it down to the basics because I think, um, you know, we had the blessing of being at leadership together in LA and that was like the number one thing we continued to hear. Stop overcomplicating everything. Like mm -hmm. this is not complicated, but the more simple, um, we keep it, the more, the more likely we are to less create the will again and again where stress and fear and anxiety comes. Um, but just following the lead of leaders, you know, and I love that. And, you, and ah, Laura is like so confident with her words and her groups and her pictures. And I love, love, love that you shared what four years ago, almost your video. And then you're now, I, I don't even have that. That's, it's painful. Your to intro. Watch that video. I'm like, ah. That was so relatable. That is so relatable. So, uh, um, let's open the floor. Does anyone have any questions for Laura? This call Hi. is recorded, so. I do. Hi, I'm Annalisa. Hi. <laughs> I have a question. So, I'm looking into lighting and then also backdrop because I wonder if it, um, a lot of times I'll do my videos like different places in my home. Is that distracting or should I always be in a place that the backdrop always looks the same? And with regards to lighting, do you use umbrella lights or softbox lights? I mean, how do you know what is best to use for lighting? Um, well, I, the crazy thing is, is I honestly think that you, wherever you are most comfortable is a great place to do your video. Like sometimes the lighting, like where I'm sitting right now is, um, is like 
where my, my desk is. And this is where I feel when I do my live videos during the day, this is where I feel most comfortable doing them. Sometimes it's so bright coming in that it kind of washes out my face. Um, but, uh, actually this is what I'm using right now. I don't want to blind you guys, but this is a little room okay. that you can get. Yeah. If you look up, um, Oh, if you look up on, um, Amazon, like, mini ring light or clip on ring light or something. I swear it was like five bucks. Um, somebody had one of these at leadership. So I went and ordered one, but it really like you can like right now, I think the lighting in here, even though this isn't the best, having a light behind you like that probably isn't the best. But I think, I always think like, like putting a candle behind you, or I like to have fresh flowers all the time to have behind me in my videos. Uh, I just, I love flowers. So it's like an excuse for me to, to have flowers. Um, but notice that now that I turn that light off behind me, it's like really bright on my face. And when I had it on, it was better. But upstairs I have um, in my, we, we have an, a little area upstairs where Justin has as an office. And I have, um, I bought a backdrop and it's just a piece of fabric that hangs from like a metal frame. It came with that. It came with a couple umbrella lights. And it came with a backlight. It's like a light on a stand. And it was like 120 bucks for the whole thing. Wasn't bad. And then they do have the larger Diva ring lights that are really great too. I have one of those upstairs. But honestly, this thing is, this thing's awesome. Like it works almost as, I think it works almost as good as the big one. Laura, what's the brand of that one? Because I'm on Amazon right now. Um, it is. Lee. Lead po L E A D P O. Okay. But I mean, look at the difference, like right here, my lighting and then just put this on there and it's like, yeah, huge difference. I mean, and I don't have yeah. any lipstick on or anything, but I all, I actually think that, um, eyebrow, like doing my eye for some reason, like if, if your eyebrows are done, and you put a little color on your lips and even like a little lighter under here, it looks really good on, on video. Cause half the time I don't have makeup on and I'm like, I gotta go get video ready really quick. And I'll just put a little under eye concealer here, mascara and my eyebrows. <laughs> and maybe so <laughs> like right now I didn't, I didn't do my hair. I'd sweat still from the shower, but you can't really tell. You can kind of hide things a little bit on video. So thank you you're welcome I actually have a quick question um Laura can you post your Wufu um application so we yes. can kind of see like because I just logged in and created and it's like asking me all <laughs> these questions so I have no idea like where to even begin yes I will send you my I'll send you the one for the challenge group Okay, because I know like my coach had sent me hers. I just, I don't even know where it is right now, to be honest. Um, and you can create three of those. For free, yeah. For, and free. I, for free. Oh, awesome. And you yeah. can just keep using, like it's just the same link that you just post on those posts that you do on Facebook? Yeah, and I have a bit.ly.com account, so I shortened my link to be, to this Actually, this is, um, sorry, I'm like going through different ones here. I'll put, the, I'll put them both on here. Whoops. What's nice, um, and Laura does this too, is that you can create one for the coaching opportunity and one for your challengers. Yeah, I'll find that out. So, um, and I have one, um, and then I actually... <laughs> My dogs are fighting a little bit. Sorry, guys. Um, but I, I can, hey, babe, can you, oh, he's not in here. Um, hey, don't do that. Penny, come here, come here. Sorry. Um, okay, here's the one for the challenge group. But if you go to bit.ly, this bit.ly, you can shorten all your links and make them how make them whatever you want them to say, and I think that makes it look even more professional. <laughs> My puppy is like going insane right now. Like <laughs> she's crazy. 
Um, but anyway, Google, you can make forms on Google too. So any new forms I need to make, we just, we do it on Google, Google Forms. I like Wufoo though. Awesome. Any, any other questions? Those are two good questions. And yes, I can post my slides. Um, I'll post the link right here because I have the link right here. It's just a, um, whoa, that's a really long link. But that's a, um, that's just a Google spreadsheet thing. Can you shoot it to me? That way I can upload it for my team. Yes. Okay. Oh, you mean the recording? Um, the recording would be great. That's yeah, I, I can actually um, try to record this to the cloud. Did you record yeah. it, right? Oh, you did. It's being recorded right now. Yeah, um, sometimes it records to the cloud, and then I can give you the, the link, and you can upload it to your U YouTube. Oh, okay. That works. But otherwise, I'll send you the, the YouTube one if it doesn't. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Yay, Anne, any questions? Jen? I have one quick question. Is there anything you do, Mary, that's different from Laura with your challenge groups? So you're pretty much like the same. And hi, I miss you. Lovely to see your face. Ah, thank you're you. The pregnant woman ever. Oh my God, I'm so bad, guys. Like, I've gained almost 30 pounds. I'm like blown up. Okay, but I always blow. I just keep telling myself that. Okay, um, <laughs> my, groups, my groups are pretty similar, I think. I've never been in any of her groups, but um, I, I love videos. I love videos. So there was a time where I was really, really like uh, video crazy Nazi and you could not be in my group. You could not apprentice coach unless you would post every day with a video. And I will tell you that changes your world because you have to be vulnerable. So what I did was for probably on at least, I don't know, probably like six months or so, that's all you were allowed to do. So every single day, instead of a typed post, you had to make a video and I feel like it changed everything about my the community of my tribe so you know day one it would be a video about confidence day two it would be a video about making Shakeology day three it would be a video about your spouse not supporting your new fit lifestyle number four it would be about eating out and I would do videos every day every single day and all my apprentice coaches had to come in doing videos every single day and I feel like recently I need to go back to that because I will tell you it creates very strong coaches very strong coaches um, it I have received feedback but that it sets the bar pretty high for your coaches um, which can be intimidating but you know um, it it creates results if you want to see women get results have them play your voice in their car every single day have them play your voice in your home every single day it's almost like having that personal trainer that cheerleader living with them for one to three minutes for three weeks so that's something I've done that's way different um, but giveaways I love giveaways I um, I do them more spontaneously now like today I did pineapple earrings for everybody who participated, they went in for some pineapple earrings that I found here on the island where I'm vacationing. Um, That's so fun. Yeah, so I think small incentives more frequently work better for my groups. Um, they keep my girls more motivated than like a prize in the beginning and a prize at the end. I just wasn't seeing the energy level that I wanted. So I think more spontaneous small gifts work better. Um, and then I, t I tag everybody. I'm kind of a Nazi. So like today I haven't heard from my new people and I will, Oh, look at that face. Okay. So I will, I will tag them and call them out and just say, I miss seeing you today. How are you doing? Yada, yada. Um, and if I still don't hear from them, I start voice messaging them on Facebook. My son's awake. But no, they're, they're, they're different themes. I change them up, just like Laura. Um, I try to keep them fun. I focus a lot on personal development. I do a lot of groups on personal development. A lot. Maybe too much. Because I need it. So that's just me. Okay, I'm going to mute.
<laughs> He's like crying. <laughs> That's really good. Thank you. I, I do um, videos too. I've started doing like live videos and things like that. And anything they have a question about, if it's like every single person has the same question, then I just make a video because it's a lot easier than answering the same question 10 mm -hmm. times. And then I can just reuse the video. So that's something. The uh, incentives though, that's a good idea to do more frequently though. Cause I was doing before and after and like they were working, but I feel like sometimes they get a little like, the people that have been doing the groups for so long, it can be a little like, I don't know, I guess tedious in a sense for them. So thank you so much. Well, we can go ahead and jump off of here, ladies, but I really appreciate you having me on here, Mary. Um, excited to have you speaking on our call next week. And you guys are all invited if you want to jump on. It's going to be Monday night at nine. So. Aw, little man. <laughs> All right, ladies, you guys have a good night. I will see you guys soon. Bye.